Hi guys, Justin again from chemistrynotes.com and this is video number three from section 15. Section 15 is kind of like chapter 15 and it's called Applications of Acid-Base Equilibria. It's essentially uh, buffers and for right now anyway it's buffer solutions and using a common ion to make a buffer and then once the buffer has been constructed like for example acetic acid with acetate solution. Um, how does it respond upon the addition of strong base and strong acid? Why is it that the pH kind of doesn't change too much when we add such a strong base or a strong acid? And we've been doing a lot of sample problems to kind of illustrate this. Now, usually we use ice tables or the ice method to solve our equilibrium expression, to solve for H plus, and then get a pH value. I also mentioned at the end of the last video that we have a shortcut called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So at the top of our notes here, page one, it says the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. In a buffered solution, the pH is governed by the ratio of HA concentration, a weak acid, right, to the common ions concentration, A minus, with the brackets to illustrate concentration. So essentially the pH depends on the ratio of the concentration of HA to the concentration of A minus or vice versa, the concentration of A minus to the concentration of HA. Now for problem solving, this can be integrated into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So remember this equation, it's pH equals pKa plus the log of the concentration of A minus, my common ion, over the concentration of HA, my weak acid. Now, just as a note here, pKa, if you haven't seen that before, it's a lot like pH, pKa is equal to the minus the log of Ka. Now this is a quick, easy way to replace the ice method for buffers. Um, it's not as informative. I like the ice method and the ice tables because you can see how the concentration are initial, you see how the change and you see the equilibrium, but the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation will do the same job. So here's an example. Using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, calculate the pH of a buffer. And this buffer solution is going to be 0 0.50 molar acetic acid and 0 0.50 molar sodium acetate, NaC2H3O2. Now, if you have a good memory or you just recently watched the prior videos, you know that the pH of this solution is gonna turn out to be 4.74 because we've done it once already. In fact, we've done it twice. We've done the same problem twice. Remember at the beginning of the last video, I had to redo that one to, so I had it in that video. Well, it says here, the Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. So if you know you're gonna use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, you might as well just get the pKa right now. pKa is minus the log of Ka equals minus the log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. My pKa is 4.74. So pH is equal to pKa plus the log of acetate concentration all over acetic acid concentration. pH is 4.74 plus the log of one. Well, the log of one, try it on your calculator hit log of one, it's zero. So pH is 4.74. That's a lot less work than the equilibrium expression that we were doing. And it matches our ice method and our ice table result from the previous video, okay? So it's up to you which one you wanna use unless they ask you to use the ice method or the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, of course. All right, let's do another sample problem. The best way for us to learn this stuff is through sample problems. And I, I'm not gonna use the Henderson-Hasselbalch e equation in this next one, but I do promise I'll use it later on in this video so you get to see it a second time, okay? I like the ice tables even though they take a bit longer. Example, a buffer solution contains 0.25 molar ammonia, NH3, that's a weak base, KB value equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. That's not a typo. The KB is actually the same as the KA for acetic acid. So let's list our major species, okay? We have NH3, we have H2O, we have NH4+, and we have Cl-. That's because the salt, ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, 
is broken up, right? Well, the Cl minus is neutral and the water is neutral, okay? So, and we learned why Cl minus, just like Na plus, is neutral in section 14. Go back and review that if you need to. But here's what we have. Now, we have a base. With the acids like HA, or the one we used was HC2H3O2 minus, HC2H3O2, we just take those and then boom, we dissociate them. When it's a base you're dealing with, and this is a weak base situation, you have to react to base with water. So NH3 aqueous isn't just going to the right on its own. We react it with water, H2O liquid, but since it's a liquid, we can put lines all the way down. It's not gonna show up in our equilibrium expression. So NH3 plus water yields NH4 plus plus OH minus. What do we have initially? We have 0.25 molar NH3, and then we had 0.40 molar NH4Cl. That's why you see an initial concentration of 0.40 for NH4 plus. We do our minus X's plus X's equilibrium. 0.25 minus X concentration of NH3. On the right hand side, the concentration of NH4 plus, 0.40 plus X. Plug all that into your equilibrium expression, products over reactants, simplify it to 0.40 X divided by 0.25. You get an X equal the concentration of OH minus. Look at the equation. There's no H plus here. Okay, this is a base. X is equal to the concentration of OH minus. You go through the math. POH is equal to 4.95. So be careful. That's the POH you've solved for because this is a weak base situation. So pH then is 9.05. And as I stated earlier, I could have used the henderson hasselbalch equation to solve for this as well. And I would have gotten the pH value the same, 9.05. Now, that's a buffer, right? Because I had my NH3, and I also had the common ion that came from NH4Cl, which is NH4+. Plus. All right? So, what would the pH be if suddenly I injected or added to the system a very strong acid? Would the pH go plummeting down from 9.05? No, it won't because this is a buffer, okay? So let's take this into effect. Remember when we solve uh, buffer problems where we're adding a base or an acid, we have two steps, right? The first step is to deal with the before and after of the addition of the OH minus in the last example and the H plus in this example. And then you just move on to number two, which is the ice expression again. So before any reaction occurs, I have NH3, NH4 plus, H plus from the hydrochloric acid, Cl minus from hydrochloric acid, and of course water. Eliminate the neutral ones. NH3, that is a weak base, okay? That is going to grab H plus, and all of the H plus, all of the 0 0.10 moles of H plus are going to go away. So first of all, how many moles of NH3 do we have? Well, it's a one liter solution times the molarity of 0.25 moles per one liter. It means I have 0.25 moles of NH3 at time zero. I have 0 0.40 moles of NH4 plus at time zero. After reacting, after all of the H plus has been quenched or is gone, in other words, it's it's been, where is it? It got converted when it reacted with NH3 to make NH4 plus on the right hand side of this equation. So after reacting, I have not, I no longer do I have 0.25 moles of NH3. I only have 0.15 moles of NH3 now. And no longer do I have 0.40 moles of NH4 plus. I've got more. I've got 0 0.50 moles. Okay. And that has to do with the stoichiometry here and the fact that it's 0 0.10 moles of H plus that's reacting. So that's how much is removed from NH3 how much is added to NH4 plus, okay? The star, after reacting, this is how we use, we use these results. And we could use those results as our initial concentrations in an ice table. Our 0.15 mole would become 0.15 molar, and then we'd have 0.50 molar for NH4 plus. But if we just go ahead and use henderson hasselbach here, pH is equal to pKa plus the log of NH3 all over NH4 plus concentration. Now, why did I do that? Well, the, in, the, in the general form of the henderson hasselbalch equation, right? It's A minus over HA. So the difference between numerator and denominator, 
A minus and H A is the fact that the bottom one has one additional H. So that's why it's NH3 and NH4 plus. Okay. So PKA, I don't have the PKA because I don't have the KA. This was a weak base problem. They gave me KB. Well, KA times KB is KW. So my KA is my KW over KB. It's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th over 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5th. KA 5.6 times 10, 10 to the minus 10. Do minus the log of that, and I get a PKA of 9.25. I can plug that in. On the right-hand side of the paper now, pH equals 9.25 plus the log of the NH3 concentration at equilibrium, 0.15 all over the concentration of NH4 plus at equilibrium, 0 0.50. That's my after, right? So the pH is 8.73. I added a really strong acid, hydrochloric acid. And the pH went from, what, 9.05 only down to 8.73. If I had added hydrochloric acid to water, the pH would have gone from 7, neutral for water, way, way down. Okay, so it says there, Addition of HCl only decreased the pH of the buffer slightly from the original pH of 9.05. All right, so I want to switch gears for a little bit and start to get into kind of like a visualization of some a laboratory technique called titrations. So I'm going to draw a burette on the next page and all this stuff, but titrations and pH curves is our next topic, okay? Titrations and pH curves, also called titration curves. And this is all related to buffers in the addition of base over time or acid over time to a solution. So it's certainly related to buffers. We're continuing, continuing with our buffer solution. But first, I need to introduce to you some of the lab techniques about the burette, what a titration is, what a pH curve is, and all this stuff. So this is my sketch of a burette the, on our next page of notes here. Those little tick marks are graduations. They're usually about one milliliter apart. And the burette is used to deliver a known volume of acid or base to that Erlenmeyer flask underneath it. So the long glass tube there is a burette. It contains something called the titrant. And titrant is the solution that you know all about. And what I mean by you know all about, it means you know its concentration or its molarity and you know the total volume that you use. So titrant is equal to the solution having a known concentration, check, and a known volume, check, delivered to the flask below. So if I know the concentration, the molarity, and I know the volume, well then I know the number of moles that I'm actually delivering to the Erlenmeyer flask. More on that in a bit. Now the unknown, in this Erlenmeyer flask here is called the analyte. So the analyte, with, with the analyte, we know the volume because we measured it out, right? We know the volume, but we don't know its concentration. So usually what's in the burette is an acid or a base, and then what's in the Erlenmeyer flask is the base or the acid, one or the other, right? And then we use the acid to find out the concentration of the base, or we use the known base to find out the molarity of the acid or vice versa. So, and it says that right here. See that tick mark down there? If the analyte is a base, the chitrant will be an acid or vice versa. Now, at the stoichiometric point, at the stoichiometric point of the acid-base reaction that I'm controlling, all right, I'm controlling down there, that little valve thing at the bottom of the burette is called a stopcock. It's just how I deliver acid or base. At the stoichiometric point of the acid-base reaction, which is the same thing as the equivalence point of the titration, well then we can say the following. All right? If we know that we're at the stoichiometric point, well then the total number of moles of base is equal to the total number of moles of acid. All right. It looks like the way I've written it is the other way around, but it's the same thing. Total number of moles of acid equals the total number of moles of base. All right. So we would need to know the identity of the acid, identity of the base, and we'd have to have a balanced chemical reaction, right? And we'll do all this in the, in the 
as we move further in section 15. It says here, the progress of an acid-base titration can be monitored by plotting the pH on the y-axis. The y-axis is the vertical axis. I always remember that because if you wrote the, the letter y, y goes down like a vertical down. The progress of an acid-base titration can be monitored by plotting the pH on the y-axis versus the amount of titrant in milliliters, usually, on the horizontal x-axis. This plot is called the titration curve. It's also called the pH curve. And we'll see some of these in later videos, not today. And then the second bullet point here is what I wanted to mention. It says there are two types of acid-base titrations. And we're going to analyze these thoroughly throughout the rest of section 15. Two types of acid-base titrations. Number one is a strong acid, strong base titration. And similarly, a strong base, strong acid titration. So number one, a strong acid, strong base titration. Number two is when you have a weak acid, strong base titration. Or similarly, right, what do you think? Instead of a weak acid, strong base, it's going to be a weak base, strong acid titration. So there are two types of acid-base titrations. Strong acid, strong base titrations, or strong base, strong acid titrations. And number two, weak acid, strong base titrations, or similarly, weak base, strong acid titrations. That's very wordy in just the bottom one third of the page there, you see strong acid, strong base, strong base, strong acid, weak acid, it's a mess, okay? So in the next video, we're gonna take a look at number one, and we're just going to take baby steps through this. In the next video, we're going to focus on number one, strong acid, strong base titrations. Likewise, strong base, strong acid titrations. And then we'll leave it alone. The video following that video, we'll take a look at the weak acid, strong base titrations. Okay, so I know it's all jumbled up into one down there at the bottom of the page. We're going to spread this out, make sense of it. That way we can kind of gather a better understanding of what, I am, what I'm talking about here. Okay. It does involve buffers and it does involve um, how do we deal with the addition of OH- or the addition of H- plus to an existing solution. All right, so stick around for the next video. It's coming up. Have a good one.